Good afternoon, Pastor David. And to you too, John. Thank you so much. Welcome those all of you who are joining us for a random moment uh, unfiltered with Pastor David. And Pastor, this is a topic we've talked about before, but it seems to be arising again regarding the vaccine and regarding the mark of the beast. I'm still hearing, and, and I see it in social media, that people are still contributing or putting that the vaccine is the mark of the beast and that even the vaccine has traces, metals and chemicals that will later, later lead to the mark of the beast. Can you give us some feedback on that, Pastor? Well, again, you know, speaking about the vaccine and the mark, that's interesting that uh, people people seem to, to um, associate the mark of the beast with, a, with a, an inoculation. I'm, I just think that people have too much time on their hands most of the time, John. I, I, I know that people are busy trying to warn people against the, the coming Antichrist and the false religion, and, and I get it. I mean, we're supposed to um, be those who are the watchmen on the wall calling out danger to the inhabitants, etc. I know that. But to go out and create a boogeyman or to... Um, to, to step into a field like medicine and say that if you take of this, this uh, inoculation, you're just setting yourself up in the future. Again, I, I mentioned to the church that the mark of the beast, and this is what Revelation teaches, is a mark that is associated with the Antichrist and is a... It's a, a way to have uh, the ability to buy or sell. And the scripture, as we know, says that those who take up that mark will find their, uh, their final end will be in the, the lake of fire, right? So how we, we move from a mark of the beast on the forehead, I'm wondering if people are stabbing their faces <laughs> with the needle to, because it speaks of the, on their hand and their forehead or their forehead, you have to stretch a lot to be, you know, forcing the scripture into your presupposed um, uh, prophetic insights. And so, again, the mark of the beast is a, a mark that's going to be used for commercial use. You cannot buy, you cannot sell. It, it is a mark that is really declaring ownership. Because later on in the same book of Revelation, um, God speaks concerning those who belong to him who had the mark of their father. And so the mark was a symbol of or is an expression of ownership. So you have the mark of the beast on your heart long before you have a mark on your hand or forehead. And so I think that the inoculation in and of itself, the method of, of presenting it to us in terms of uh, on the one hand, it's we it's suspect. We can't trust this because Trump and his team came up with it. And then now it's not politicized anymore. And now this this is the greatest thing where where the uh, Mr. Biden was saying that it was through his efforts and his team. It, it's been politicized to the point where I think it's kind of ridiculous. And so the inoculation. I don't believe, and I don't know any reputable theologian or Bible teacher, I don't know any who would say that the mark of the beast is, is, is going to come because we have taken a shot, any more than when we got tetanus shots, or any more than when we got inoculated from mumps, or, or any other disease or virus, measles, you name it. Uh, there's always been Christians who don't read their Bibles very closely who present themselves as self-styled prophets and evangelists and, and teachers. And they post it on, on, on a platform now that gets them more attention than ever in history. Um, that's why rumors spread faster and that's why the fear sp spreads worldwide almost immediately now. Whereas before we might've had somebody will say in New York who who was saying, I think the mark of the beast is this particular inoculation 
It may never have made that to the West Coast. It may have never left its own area, but not today. Today, somebody can be sitting there saying, oh, did you notice that someone took a shot and then there was a, a magnet that could put a magnet on its arm? Well, that's gotta be the devil. And it's kind of like voodoo. It's kind of like hoodoo. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, you're to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, strength, and with all your mind. You know, our minds are supposed to be dedicated to this research of God and the search of the things of the Lord. You know, Paul said it was through the renewing of the mind that we know the perfect will of God. And I think that some people have forgotten their minds are supposed to be renewed. Mm -hmm. And so what they are is they're filled with fantasies and imaginations. And so again, John, I'm not receiving the inoculation because I don't have to. I had COVID. I have the antibodies. But would I? I've been, I've been told that we need to wait on that one because those who have had um, COVID, if they take of the, the shot, it may have an, an effect that we're not looking for with the shot. I have to look more into that and I won't give more detail about that. But would I receive the shot I wouldn't be afraid to, the way I got measles inoculations, mumps inoculations, and penicillin, and various other things that have been made uh, available. So I wouldn't be afraid of getting a shot. I just don't like the way the government intruded on our personal freedoms and our personal rights, but that's a different issue. That's a different issue. I don't believe that the government has the right to be the nanny over my life. I believe that I, I'm supposed to be able to make my own decisions for myself. And, and the women who used to scream and still do, it's my body, my choice. Well, I think that I can say the same thing. It's my body, it's my choice. And if I don't choose to have that, then I don't know why anybody should try to shame me into it. But because we live in a time when there are a lot of, a lot of people politicizing this and are saying that to wear the, to have that mask is, and have the inoculation and to even be bribed into it so that you might win a lottery or some beer, you know, does that not show you what a, what, what, what a ridiculous thing this is? It's if you can't convince me medically that I should have something, you're going to try and bribe me with beer or, or a lottery. This is, this is crazy and why people don't see it for what it is, is a testament to how easy it is to deceive people. So, I see that more as being an indicator of how people will follow Antichrist than a shot. The fact that people were willing to don masks when it's been demonstrated that the only ones who really should have been doing that should have been those who were, were older, you know, because it may have helped them. And even so, it was demonstrated that the kinds of masks that were being made available wasn't working anyway. And so you have so many mixed messages. Um, I just think that we need to take a breath, step back and evaluate because it has become a, a shame thing now. I was told just the other day, and I'll kind of close with this, uh, how that um, you go into a store and people will look at you like, why don't you have your mask on? Like you have the plague. <laughs> you, you, are, you, you are somehow unloving and selfish. And uh, that's what's happened because the science isn't there from everything I'm hearing. The science, they're not following what they say is the science. So this is a manipulative technique to control people and to use fear to do that. When those who were most susceptible to injury through this virus were the aged, children have proven to be not. And uh, up to a certain age, you know, when you become an elderly person, Naturally, if we love our elderly people, we will care for them, but it's been twisted to just a control for everybody. Don't let the kids go to school, ruin businesses, and make Fauci rich. You know, a man who knows he was, uh, from everything I've been watching on the news, it appears that he knows that uh, what he was diagnosing for the nation wasn't accurate because he was working with the WHO and and uh, others who are profiting from this. I think that there's a lot to be learned from this right now that 
that uh, the, <laughs> the media is hiding from, from Americans because they don't want Fauci to be proven for what he is. And he just signed a book deal, you know, so he can make millions of dollars as the hero. And he's telling us that he's gonna tell us the truth when in fact he's been busted because he has, he has not been telling us the truth. So anyway, that's the bigger story to me. So in terms of whether or not I'm gonna I get a shot, you know, I don't need one. And uh, there's millions who have already had it. And it seems that herd immunity has pretty much taken, you know, taken effect. And what we have here in California is a governor, it would seem to me, who is really bent on just controlling his population. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what this has become. So is, <laughs> is the shot the mark of the beast? And I'd have to say no. Uh, no, I, I don't see that. So many people are so scared in the control aspect. As you mentioned, I would be more concerned about the deception that's going on, which is a sign that Jesus speaks about. The deception is, is, is the false prophets. Matthew 24 repeats that several times. False teachers, false prophets. This is setting the tone for the Antichrist, but it's not the shot itself. It's the way we're being manipulated to believe certain things. Thank you, Pastor David, and again, thank you for the clarity. If you want to learn more about end times, we have a Revelation study that you're wrapping up next Sunday, Yep. and it's going to be Revelation chapter 22. To, uh, yeah, to, uh, I think it's verse 12 to 21. So we're we'll wrapping that study up. It's been a yeah. great study. It's an invitation. Yes. It's, it's Jesus' last invitation for people to, to heed after seeing what's going to take place. He closes with mercy, mm. gives an invitation because he's warned us of what's going to take place. And he gave in the first few verses of that chapter, um, and, uh, verses 6 through 11, he gave the blessings of the believer. But we close with the warnings to the unbeliever. Wow. Come on out, church family. Wednesday evening, we'll be in Job. Yeah, Job. And uh, we look forward to having you out. Fourth of July baptisms, our Israel trip. We have a lot of things going yeah. on. And so Wednesday evening, 7 p.m., Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. And, and this 10 Saturday, 45. our men's conference. Oh, and this Saturday is our men's conference. So mm -hmm. men, come on out. We have a limited supply of meal tickets left. Oh, excellent. So Good. come to the front desk, call, uh, conference only. We'll be available tickets the day of the conference. It'll be great. We look forward to seeing you. Pastor David, thank right. you. And we'll see you soon. Bye, right, John.